Hey, do you have restless leg syndrome? Legs bouncing all over the place? Achy legs that never seem to resolve? Chronic leg cramps or just an unsteadiness in the legs? If so, in this video, I'm gonna address what could be causing this and what you can do to resolve it. And there's a surprising twist, so make sure you stay to the end. So before we get started, Please make sure that you like and subscribe if you find this video helpful. It helps me reach more people to give this message to the masses. Share this with your loved ones who may be struggling with their health and let's help them create a strong life. So like I said, make sure you stay to the end and I'll show you where you can get some resources to help with this. So let's go ahead and dive into the topic for today. So I was doing some research and I found there appears to be a direct correlation between restless leg syndrome and uh, irritable bowel syndrome IBS now if you have the symptoms I described above but also have IBS which consists of nausea diarrhea stomach cramps stomach pain or gut-wrenching feeling then there could be some correlation so let's dive into what I found now what is restless leg syndrome restless leg syndrome or RLS is a disorder in which a person experiences uncomfortable urges to move their legs symptoms typically occur during times of rest or inactivity now particularly in the evening and into the night and may contribute to insomnia so if you're staying up late because the legs are just twitching and moving and you're not getting comfortable then you may qualify for this uh, kind of treatment or natural home care that we can come up with. So symptoms typically, um, they're bothersome and urges are often relieved with movement. So you feel like you have to move your legs in order to get some kind of relief. And it is estimated that approximately seven to 10% of the population has RLS. Now, there are some causes that researchers have identified and the following may be possible contributors to restless leg syndrome. So one is a genetic predisposition. So if people in your family have uh, lower levels of electrolytes or they have some genetic dysfunction of the muscle tissue, then those can cause the types of leg cramping that you may be experiencing. So if you notice that your family has a lot of issues with leg cramps or just that restless leg syndrome, then it may be a genetic. Now, one thing to note on that is that the people that you're living with and spending the most time with, if you have the same diet and the same habits that they do, if they're unhealthy, then a lot of the times things are mistaken as genetic when they're just pretty much environmental. So they're more a contribution from your family or the environment than you're in, more so than your actual genetics. And sometimes it's hard to kind of differentiate the two, but you want to look at the habits that you're doing and if they are unhealthy and if they're not. Now, problems with the neurotransmitter dopamine. So a lot of the times now this isn't a correlation to Parkinson's but Parkinson's is primarily due to issues in the substantia nigra in the brain which is the main place where you make dopamine so if you're having problems with that part of the brain or if it's getting later in your life then that can be a warning sign that maybe you want to look into that and maybe do some additional testing and then you also want to look at the constituents that make dopamine so your B vitamins and also your amino acids now problems with metabolism of iron so I made a video that talks about the number one deficiency in the world is actually iron so go check that video out and then it has some really good tips and tricks for things that you can do to actually improve your metabolism of iron and then problems with the nervous system motor uh, pathways so like I said a lot of that comes from the basal ganglia where, where the uh, substantia nigra is located so if you have like B1 deficiency Deficiencies, vitamin and mineral deficiencies are very common, electrolyte deficiencies, then look into that and make sure that you don't have some degenerative um, neuromuscular disease or anything like that, and your doctor should be able to help you with that. Now, clinical studies are showing that people who have certain gastrointestinal disorders have a higher rate of restless leg syndrome, including celiac disease, Crohn's disease, and IBS. So what that is saying uh, that people with RLS you may want to check for celiac disease, Crohn's disease, and IBS. Now, typically, there is an underlying root cause that is called, that is 
you know, perpetuating these issues such as SIBO and leaky gut. And I have videos on those too. If you want to look and see what is going on with your gut and how you can repair it, then check out those videos. But studies estimate that approximately one fourth to one third of IBS patients may also have restless leg syndrome. Now, if we really take a look at this, if you're not breaking down your vitamins and minerals so that you can make neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine, then a lot of the times what will happen is people get on SSRIs, uh, leaky gut can lead to leaky brain, to brain inflammation. So there's an underlying issue that's causing all of it, but you just have to get to the bottom of what is going on. I would suggest that you definitely start with looking at the gut. Now, the specific issue associated with RLS is a condition known as small intestine bacterial overgrowth or SIBO. And you may have heard of this before, but SIBO is a condition in which rare gut residing bacteria are overrepresented in the gut. So that means that there is an abundance of bad bacteria in your gut and not good bacteria. So the typical, you can do like a breath test is essentially how they diagnose it. But another way to do it is to do a kill off and do a, like a total gut reset. Now, like a detox program can really help with this, uh, cutting out like simple sugars, making sure that you're getting rid of any biofilms, uh, any type of parasites, heavy metals that may be located. Uh, other toxins like myotoxins as well can be located in there. So you want to do like a very thorough cleanse and get all of that stuff out. Now, why does SIBO cause restless leg syndrome? Chronic inflammation caused by SIBO or gut dysbiosis when there is an unhealthy balance of the types of gut bacteria dysbiosis in the colon may release hep Cidian, which is a hormone that can decrease iron availability in the brain and contribute to RLS. Now, a Stanford finding suggests that potentially treating a person's SIBO may actually help resolve the brain iron deficiency that contributes to RLS. So that's pretty cool. So that's just saying that if we actually treat the gut, then we may treat the underlying issue that is causing the restless leg syndrome. And so by doing so, we kind of knock out both. Then we get rid of the restless leg, but but then we also treat and have your gut working properly. Now, promising treatment in one study, 13 IBS patients who tested positive for SIBO using the breath testing were treated with the antibiotic rifaximine for a period of 10 days. Now, following treatment, according to the study, 10 of these patients experienced at least 80% improvement. So 10 out of the 13 people with IBS actually did better after getting treated with the antibiotic. Now, uh, in their restless leg symptoms, they uh, noted that there was a significant decrease. Now, at a later follow-up date, half of these patients reported complete relief from their restless leg syndrome. So if you're experiencing restless leg syndrome, you may wanna talk to your doctor and just look at this study. Now, if you need links to the study, just comment below and I'll help send those over to you so that you can show your doctor. But just something if you're experiencing, more than happy to help with any of that. Now, for a more comprehensive natural treatment of SIBO, what I recommend is like looking for somebody who's a functional medicine practitioner that really understands a gut function and can help dive in and maybe even do some testing to see exactly what's going on. A GI effects by Genova is a great stool test and then there's the GI map as well. But a lot of the times what you can do is you can just do a simple uh, like SIBO meal plan uh, or an autoimmune meal plan and there should be one below so you can check that out you can get that for free but if you do that then what you can do is just do a total reset and then do some simple supplementation with like oregano oil uh, berberine um, you can use a product called GI Microbics from Designs for Health is the one that we use and those can actually reset the gut microbiome and kill off any of the bad bacteria that may be causing the issues that you're experiencing. So those are super good ways that you can do that. Now, uh, it's very important to review dietary recommendations specific for SIBO and natural botanicals or herbs that are effective in treating SIBO. So sometimes that's why testing is required because some uh, gut bacteria are more susceptible to certain herbals than others are. 
and by um, looking and testing you can actually make the treatment more effective rather than you get a little bit better but then you rebound back into it I've seen that happen multiple times in the clinic and it's just because either it wasn't long enough which sometimes this can take up to four to six months is what I tell most of my patients or you know you just didn't have the correct uh, antibiotic or herbal to get rid of it. Now most of the time you can work in conjunction with a functional medicine practitioner and your regular healthcare provider and then they can have that like symbiotic relationship to get you better and get you the best results depending on what your test shows. Now although these studies are small I believe that there is hope that in patients suffering with IBS SIBO and restless leg syndrome treatment to eradicate SIBO could be in fact very helpful when when looking at at getting rid of this once and for all. Now, if you found this information helpful, then please help me achieve my mission of helping as many people as possible by hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. This helps my content and message reach more people who could be struggling, and it helps them understand that there is an alternative and or maybe there's an underlying condition going on that could be more troublesome than we'd really see. So a lot of the times our symptoms are an indication that there's actually something deeper going on. So also share this video on your socials or with your friends or families, I would really appreciate it. I appreciate you spreading the word. And comment below if you have any questions or if there are any topics you would like uh, me to go over because I'm here to you know, help you all understand what's going on. And thank you again for uh, watching my channel so much. I really appreciate it. See you all next time. Bye.